Hi, my name's Karen Miller, and I'm the owner of Zen Tenkara. Uh, I'm going to take uh, today to talk to you a little bit uh, about fish geometry and uh, the angles of fish fighting, whether you're on a rod or reel or on a Tenkara rod. Um, and I posted an illustration uh, some time ago onto social media and got a, a lot of uh, comments and questions about it. So I thought I would take this time uh, just to go into it maybe a little bit more rather than just throwing the picture up there, answering some of the questions that I received uh, on the illustration and um, and just making sure that we understand what we're looking at when we look at this illustration. So uh, this was the uh, picture that was uh, posted onto social media. And uh, this uh, is an illustration that uh, shows essentially triangles, different types of triangles. And it represents um, fish, uh, uh, fish fighting angles uh, that are effective or ineffective. But what occurred during uh, a, a fight uh, with a fish? And so you have three points uh, on those triangles. You have the angler you have the fish, and then the third point is the rod tip, or where the, the uh, tip and the line uh, are connected. And when you connect those three points, you get these, um, these illustrations, these triangles. Um, this is the critical angle that we're gonna be talking about. So in this picture, you've got the fish out here, You've got the angler, which is represented by this black dot. And this black line here represents the, um, the rod, or uh, this is the tip of the rod. And then the red is going to be the line, right? Um, and so you've got these neat little triangles. And when I started to think about how I fight fish, and uh, these three uh, connected points or points of connection, it really uh, started to come together to me. And I had this aha moment that uh, I'm sure other people uh, know and understand, but I don't think I've ever seen it actually illustrated like this. And so when we're in these big angles, we have a lot of control over the fish. We have very little tension on the line and we are in essentially a place of power and control. And we have a lot of ability to steer and turn the fish. In these positions, we are often utilizing the majority of our fly rod. So fly rods uh, and tinkar rods are different in that a fly rod is generally much stiffer and it does have a belly and a spine uh, and it is designed to uh, bend and flex in a certain direction. A tenkar rod does not have a spine or a belly and it can flex in all positions um, and it, it is, is essentially a softer rod or more flexible rod but still has backbone and the further down the rod we go regardless of whether it's a tenkar rod or a traditional uh, rod, the, the, towards the butt or the handle of the rod, uh, that is where you have your strength and your backbone, right? The, the, that is the stronger, sturdier part of your uh, fly rod. And the tip section is your softer, uh, more delicate or more flexible portion of the rod. So if we're thinking about a rod and reel setup, not a tinkar rod right now, but just a rod and reel setup, and we look back at these pictures, we know that if we are in a fight with a fish 
and on a rod and reel, the fish begins to run. Common practice often is to lay the rod tip down and allow the fish to take line off the reel, right? So when we point the rod tip at the fish, lay the rod out, we are not uh, we, we're not creating any type of force on the fish. We're allowing him to run and we're allowing him to take line off the reel. As that fish runs and starts to get a little tired, we start to work our way back up. We regain control by reeling in line as we simultaneously begin to lift the rod back into a higher position. When we do this, we are increasing the angle and we are reestablishing control. We're also utilizing increasingly more of the rod as we progress in these illustrations up here right? Down here, we're not really using any portion of the rod to fight the fish. That's why the fish can run and take line. But as we get back into these positions, we are now re-engaging the rod, getting back onto the reel, and uh, getting back into the fight, so to speak, and typically regaining control over the fish until ultimately you've brought the fish, reeled the fish all the way in. And we all have seen photos of those anglers where they're leaning back and the, the rod is bent over and they are putting all the pressure they can, holding that rod as they are reeling, 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 reeling that, that fish in. And that is where they are strong, they're in control, they have power, and they have a large angle. They're not only bringing the rod back, but in many of these, uh, these photos and captured moments, you actually see the angler leaning his body back into it, bending his knees in order to create a bigger curve he's or bigger angle. He's maximizing this angle as much as he can in order to stay in control and on top of the fight. So how does that work on a Tenkara rod? Okay. So the reality is on a Tenkara rod with no reel, you can never ever lay your your rod tip uh, down and point it at the fish. If you ever get into this bottom position on a tenkara rod, you've essentially lost. It is impossible to regain any control. Typically what happens is the fish pops off the tippet or your lillian or line breaks off the end of your rod. But here, the game is over. Even here, you're in trouble. You're in real trouble. Unless that fish is really at a point where he's not going to run, he's maybe slowing down or pausing just long enough for you to regain your position and catch up to the fish, it's kind of a lost cause as well. Here, there is hope as long as you're willing to move your feet. And of course, this is where we generally want to be when we're fighting a fish, particularly on a Tenkara rod. We can never, ever, ever afford to get into these positions. Okay. At 45 degrees, you're working hard to be in control. At 90, you're pretty rock solid and are probably winning the battle and steering and managing the fish. As well as here, if you're really pulling back probably not staying in this position for long, but regaining control 
and overpowering the fish to, to, to do a drastic turn and then getting back into this position. So what happens on a tenkara rod is, of course, as it lays out flat, you're not working the rod. You have no control. And since you don't have a reel and line for the fish to take, you lose the fish. But opposite that, if you lay your rod tip back so far, what happens is you are actually underusing your rod. And you, you have this long 10 or 12 foot rod, but you only end up using the first two to three feet of it. And that's what looks like when you go into this position. So as the angler lays his rod further and further down, he uses less and less of this belly and butt section and uses more and more of this top section. Well, the problem is this top section has no fighting power. And so you're, you're essentially demanding your rod to fight a fish in its weakest, most flexible portion, which doesn't make sense, right? If you have a 12 foot rod, use 12 feet of it. Don't use the first two feet of it. What also happens is you're overloading this section, but you're also getting bounce. Since this is the most flexible section of your rod, as the fish starts to pull, your tip section is going to bounce and give and flex. And every time that happens, you are losing tension on this line and creating slack. When you create slack in your line, you allow the fish movement to throw the hook. So often what happens if your rod doesn't break, which is a good thing, you end up losing the fish because you haven't maintained steady, constant pressure, but allowed uh, slack in the line and ultimately given the fish an opportunity to throw the hook and to take off. So while here it would appear that we're creating a larger angle, we're creating too big of an angle and we're no longer using the majority portion of our rod, okay? So the sweet spot, as far as fish fighting angles, is roughly no smaller than 45 degrees and no larger than about 135 degrees. So that is where we want to be from 45 degrees to 135 degrees. And this accounts for the fact that there is bending that occurs in these rods. So it's ultimately where your tip ends up, not the round portion of your rod, but actually where the tip is and connects to the line that is connected to the fish, okay? So that is, that, is the, the, that is what represents the point. And if we have a tenkara rod here, we're having a rod that bends this way and a rod that bends this way and this way, okay? And I will show you that. Here. 
So that is going to be the flex That is the flex profile of your rod, okay? Because we know that even a fly rod isn't a straight line, and certainly a tenkara rod is not a straight line. So that is what the power curve looks like, and ultimately where you want your tip to be in relation to the fish and your body. Now, the other thing that's really critical is um, if we were looking straight at an angler, or uh, especially with a rod and reel, they would often be fishing in this manner because, again, uh, fly rods have a belly and a spine and are designed to cast along a certain plane. So whether you turn it over or you uh, go vertically or horizontally, that rod has to be in a certain position in order to cast and flex and bend and perform. Tenkara rods don't have this. Now, when I'm fighting a fish, if I'm bringing my rod tip back, as I had said earlier, the further I bring my rod tip back, the less I actually use of the rod. So you want to maintain the curve, but you want to do it in a way that doesn't overload a particular section. And also that doesn't uh, create a bounce uh, problem in the tip of your rod. So if I have a rod and I'm working vertically, fighting that fish, and opening and closing my angles, I'm putting all the pressure at the top, right? If I am, let's see if I can draw this. If I'm, here's the angler and I bring my rod here, I'm gonna get a bouncing sec, uh, uh, problem here with the fish, but if I aim for a very open, wide curve, and instead of bringing my rod back, which makes my curve smaller as I bring it back farther and farther and farther, it forces the tip section to curve and flex more and more and more because I'm essentially laying my rod tip out flat behind me. And only the, the tip of the section, the, the top of the section is bending. If instead I turn my rod and work 45 degrees off of the, uh, the surface of the water, I can op have an open curve, maintain it and look at it while avoiding a bouncing effect by just having uh, my rod tip engaged. So if I work 45 degrees off the water, I'm actually able to maintain more constant pressure and distribute the load of that uh, fish over the full length of my rod more effectively than if I'm bringing it behind me. If I'm bringing it parallel and working this way versus this way, if that makes sense. So if we look at these pictures, this makes sense with a rod and reel if we were looking straight at the angler. If we were standing in the river looking downstream at a dude with uh, the, his fly rod in his hand. But for a moment, instead, I want you to take the bird's eye view. I want you to imagine that you were a bird or a drone hovering over the top of an angler. This is the top of the angler's head and you are looking down at the angler. And instead of these curves coming straight back, behind him, they are coming off to the side and 
he or she is maintaining about a 45 degree angle off the surface of the water. The only time that you really ever want to bring your rod up is when you're landing the fish, okay? It will be your most vulnerable position, so you don't ever want to hang out in that position for very long. It is effective for raising the fish's head so that you can come in with a net or a guide can come in with a net and you can scoop from underneath, but it is ineffective for managing or fighting the fish because of that bounce problem, that tip section, because you're not engaging uh, the rest of the rod, so you have no power, you do not have constant steady pressure, you have fluctuating pressure because of that uh, floppy tip section, and you have very little control. You also have 360 degrees that a fish can run around you. If I fish, uh, and I utilize those curves off to the side, then I've reduced my playing field to 180 degrees. Now I'm in control and I can turn my rod over and in, in response to where the fish moves in order to stay in control and maintain steady pressure. So you bring that rod tip up, only when you are getting ready to land the fish. That is how you avoid breaks, you stay in control, you fight a fair, uh, efficient uh, fight with the fish, uh, you don't exhaust him, you're not beating him up, it's relatively quick because it is so efficient. But the key is the sweet spot, understanding those fish fighting angles, 45 to 135 degrees, steady, constant pressure, and never, ever, ever let your rod go out straight.